Johnny Ive. The person that worked alongside Steve Jobs the most and designed everything from the original iPod to the iPhone to the iMac and your MacBook that you're watching this video from, or whatever Apple device you have and you're watching this video from, yeah, that Johnny Ive, he's leaving Apple for good. And you've all probably heard the story by now. I mean, I've even covered this briefly in a previous Enough Tech News episode, but in this video, I wanna go over the entire timeline, the full story with some details that you might have not known about. So, welcome to the real reason why Johnny Ive has left Apple. Sir Jonathan Paul Ive was born on the 27th of February 1967 in London. And he's best known for designing some of the most iconic products in the history of tech. Shortly after graduating university, where he studied industrial design at the University of Northumbria in the UK, Johnny entered at a product design agency called Roberts Waver Group, and this was also his university sponsor. Then a year later, Johnny joined Tangerine, which was a startup design company where Johnny designed products such as microwave ovens, toothbrushes, and yes, even toilets and, uh, and more. And Johnny actually had some very impressive designs there. Like here's an actual sink that he designed and it just looked incredible. Like, wow, look at that design. That's that's really, really cool, even, even for today. But unfortunately his superiors didn't like his designs because they were too modern and too expensive to manufacture and Johnny wanted to work on his own designs. But luckily in two years time, Apple would become a client of Tangerine and Johnny was now working for Apple, albeit indirectly. And uh, the first PowerBooks, by the way, the PowerBook Duo, for example, those were actually designed, the first Apple designed products that Johnny Ive was involved in. Then in September of 1992, about a year after Apple became a client of Tangerine, Johnny Ive joined Apple as a full-time employee. So he was working finally directly for Apple at this point. Oh, fun fact, uh, did you guys know that Tim Cook only joined Apple in 1998? So yes, Johnny Ive has actually been with Apple longer than Tim Cook was by a full six years. Now, during this time, Steve Jobs was actually not working at Apple anymore. So yeah, long story short, Steve Jobs named John Scully, the head of Pepsi Cola, uh, the CEO of Apple in 1981, when Apple went public, as uh, he only wanted to focus on products rather than running the company. Now, since the Mac that debuted in 1984 didn't do so well in terms of sales, uh, Steve Jobs' relationship with Scully started to decline. And the board actually sided with Scully, who removed Steve uh, from the product development team. Since Scully was now the CEO, he actually had the power to do that. And Steve actually left, so he wasn't fired, as many people believe, uh, but he was basically forced to leave his own company. In 1996, since Apple was struggling without Steve's ideas and was about to go bankrupt, they actually bought Next, which Steve Jobs founded in the meantime. Um, and yeah, Steve Jobs was there, and basically Apple rehired this way Steve and also made him the CEO in 1997 to bring back Apple's glory. So when Johnny Ive joined Apple in 1992, Steve wasn't there just yet. And apparently Johnny was quite unhappy in a number of occasions because of how Apple was performing and he wanted to quit quite a number of times. Luckily, with Steve Jobs' return in 1996, Steve wanted to take the company in a completely different direction, and he actually formed a special design and product development team that would work very closely with Steve on all the upcoming Apple products. And Steve named Johnny to be the Senior Vice President of Industrial Design the same year Steve became CEO again in 1997. And that's how it all started. So Johnny's first actual design was the iMac, which was released in 1998. Yes, those colored iMacs, which came in a variety of colors and transparent backs, they looked way better than most PCs 10 years from then. So they were incredibly modern, even back in 1998. They were aimed at low-end consumers rather than high-end corporate markets uh, that most of their competition was actually aimed at. And yes, it, it worked. So the iMac became Apple's most iconic product, and it still is one of Apple's best and most useful products yet. And thanks to how well the iMac was received, uh, Steve actually gave Johnny Ive his own design office in 2000, and he was the only Apple designer ever with a private office, even, even today. Johnny also got his own design team, and that office was the place where he was overseeing all the work that his team was doing. So he designed the iPod from that very office, uh, which was launched in 2001, and we all know how it completely changed the music industry. It allowed you to carry 1,000 songs in your pocket, which was insane, compared to about 30 or so, uh, which is what you could do with a CD player at that time. iTunes was also launched alongside it, uh, as the world's biggest online store for music. It was, it was a game changer in every single way. 
And Johnny Ive was there for all of that. He then worked on the next generation of iPods, the iPod Mini, the iPod Nano, all of which clearly had a Johnny Ive inspired design with that minimalistic look, a minimal number of buttons, actually just a click wheel, uh, and a design that got thinner and thinner over the years, and of course, many, many vibrant colors, all of which reminded us of the original iMac. And then Apple combined all of those designs and engineering into something that would have the biggest impact in the world of technology yet. In 2007, Apple released the iPhone, the biggest and the most important project for both Steve and Johnny Ive. And it was, yeah, it was a success, bigger than anyone would have expected. Uh, the App Store allowed developers to build apps for the iPhone, which made full use of every single sensor inside a phone and allowed pretty much any app that you could think of to exist. And Apple kept on working on better versions of the iPhone. 2010 saw the introduction of the iPhone 4, my favorite iPhone design ever, honestly, especially with that retina display, that full metal and glass build. This was the biggest change to an iPhone aside from the iPhone 10. And this was the pinnacle of the close collaboration between Johnny Ive and Steve Jobs. However, in 2011, just a single day after the iPhone 4S was announced on October the 4th, on October the 5th, Steve Jobs passed away. Age 56, he died of pancreatic cancer. And that was, that was a huge blow, not just for Apple, but for the entire world. News outlets started covering this like crazy in pretty much every single country on Earth. And most importantly, people were very, very affected by his passing. They, they cried and gathered around and they left flowers and offerings to Steve. It was, it was truly sad because Steve changed the entire tech industry. He changed the lives of billions of people and billions of more people to come. And now he was, he was just gone. But interesting enough, the person to succeed Steve wasn't the person that was there from almost the very start, working alongside Steve on Apple's greatest products. No, it wasn't Johnny, but instead, Tim Cook was chosen by Steve Jobs himself to lead Apple without him. And it was a bit of an odd choice, especially if you look at this from the outside. If anyone, Johnny Ive deserved to be the CEO the most because he shared a lot of Steve Jobs' own design ideas and, and thoughts and product ideas. However, you see, Johnny was, was not a numbers person. And for Apple to survive without Steve, Apple needed a strong person that was focused on making revenue and keeping Apple afloat. And that person was not Johnny Ive, that person was Tim Cook. Uh, Tim was not the hero that Apple deserved, but it was the hero that Apple needed. In 2012, a year after Steve's death, uh, Tim Cook gave Johnny the position of Senior Vice President of Design, and Johnny was now responsible for overseeing the software designs of the UI as well, rather than just the hardware. And that definitely showed. When in 2013, Apple announced the major iOS 7 redesign, a complete overhaul of iOS since 2007 when the original iPhone came out. And this was all thanks to Johnny Ive. And Johnny has been involved in pretty much all of Apple's big projects ever since. The Apple Watch was something that he was fully invested in. The Apple Park or the Apple Spaceship HQ was another big project, the biggest one yet, that Steve and Johnny actually worked very, very close together. Uh, and Johnny was still heavily focused and involved in this even after Steve Jobs' death. But yes, not all of Johnny Ive's design were great. The Magic Mouse, the smart keyboard case for the iPhones, that thin butterfly keyboard on the MacBook Pros, which was a complete disaster, the way the Apple Pencil charges on the first and second gen iPad Pros, all of these were really, really bad designs from a functionality, functionality standpoint. But yeah, these were just a few exceptions because for the most part, Johnny Ive's designs were beautiful and truly unique. And then in May 20. 15, Tim Cook promoted Johnny to the position of CDO, or Chief Design Officer, and at that time Johnny was just one of only three people with such a chief level position. However, as you'll probably know by now, just four years later, and on the 27th of June 2019, Apple has announced that Johnny will actually be leaving Apple entirely, and instead he would focus on starting his own company called Love From. I do think that Love Form sounds better, by the way. And Love From would actually have Apple as its primary client. So Johnny would still help Apple design future products. It's just that Johnny wouldn't be working as an employee for Apple full time, but he would be working as a contractor instead. Now, there have been quite a lot of anonymous sources from Apple that are claiming that Johnny was very unhappy with how things have been going at Apple recently. Bloomberg and the Wall Street Journal have both released very detailed articles on this. Uh, and here's what the inside sources have told them. So apparently Johnny Ive has been leaving, has already left Apple actually for, for years, unofficially. So Johnny led uh, a small team of designers and they all worked together on designing the next Apple products. Uh, but according to Bloomberg, at least six members out of that really small team has actually left during the past three years. 
So yeah, something was definitely not right. According to this report, the main frustration that Johnny and his team had was that they wanted to work. Yes, they wanted to design new products, but the executive team, Tim Cook, wanted to focus on profits by reusing the same old designs. And I definitely agree with that. Apple has barely made any new designs since Steve Jobs died in 2011. Apple used to keep an iPhone design for two years, a new design, and then an S model the year after. Uh, the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 6 were new designs indeed. However, the iPhone 6, the 6S, the iPhone 7, and the iPhone 8, they had the exact same design, almost the exact same design as the iPhone 6 did. So there you go, four years instead of two. And then the iPhone 11, which is coming out this year, will again look identical to the iPhone 10 from 2017. So at least another three years of the exact same design. The iMacs, for example, they've had the exact same design from the front over the past 10 years. Yes, 10 years and we've had the same design. And yeah, aside from the new iPad Pro 11 inch, which came out in November, the iPads have also looked more or less the same. The entry level iPad, for example, that Apple launched in 2017 and refreshed in 2018, has the exact same design as the iPad Air 1 from 2013. Then the iPad Air 3 from 2019 has the exact same design as the iPad Pro from 2017. Um, so, um, yeah, it's not looking really good design wise for Apple. Apple's been, yeah, extremely lazy at design in the past few years. And I can definitely see why the design team and Johnny were frustrated. They wanted to make new designs but the executive team just wanted to focus on profits. Apparently the situation got so bad that Johnny was barely even showing up at work. So he was only in the office for two days a week and he even stopped going to meetings. Instead, he would meet with his team at home or in hotels or other venues, which in turn made Johnny Ives' own design team very frustrated with Johnny himself. And I mean, when Apple's reusing all designs, what's even the point of having a design team showing up at work Anyways, you know, if there's nothing they can work on, well, what's what's the point? One former Apple executive that chose to stay anonymous told Bloomberg that uh, the design team is made up of the most creative people, but now there is an operations barrier that simply wasn't there before. People are scared to be innovative. Also, something that I've just realized, remember the iPhone SE 2? Yes, that one got leaked so heavily, and we even had multiple design options on that. We had an iPhone 10 style design with skirt off sides. We had a smaller iPhone 10 and more design options as well. So apparently some of those designs were actually real and the executive and marketing team canned the iPhone SE 2, which pissed off the design team heavily since you know they, they've been working on that for quite some time. And according to Wall Street Journal's report, another frustration that Johnny Ive had uh, was that Tim Cook showed little to no interest in the product development process. You know, where Steve Jobs was working very closely with Johnny and even shared the exact same questions and ideas about the, the, the products in some cases, uh, Tim Cook only saw some Apple products for the first time in the hands-on area of Apple events. This is what the Wall Street Journal report said. That's, that's crazy, but I, I can definitely believe that. Uh, at the Mac Pro launch event at WWDC this year, we've seen some quite some quite some weird photos and videos where Tim Cook was talking to Johnny Ive and he was amazed to see the Mac Pro in person. He acted as if he had never seen that thing before and Johnny Ive seems to be explaining the Mac Pro to Tim, which was a uh, very, very odd. And I can, I can see why this is very hurting to Johnny. You know, Johnny used to work, like I said, neck and neck with Steve. And uh, not only was he fully alone over the past eight years, but he and his design team were denied from making new designs. You know, if this is indeed the case, as it's reported, I'm quite surprised that Johnny hasn't left earlier. At the same time, I don't blame Tim Cook either because Tim Cook is not Steve Jobs. In fact, apparently Steve Jobs has even admitted to his biographer, Walter Isaacson, that Tim Cook was not a product person. Tim Cook, in fact, fun fact, managed to make Apple more money than Steve did since he founded Apple. Yes, Tim focuses on sustainability through improving the current lineups and focusing more and more on services recently, while Steve Jobs, he focused on innovation and physical products. Now, Tim Cook has actually reached out to Dylan Byers of NBC News uh, and sent him an email calling that Wall Street Journal story absurd. So yes, Tim, of course, denied everything that Wall Street Journal reported, saying that Wall Street Journal had no understanding of how Apple works as a company and that uh, the design team is stronger than ever and working on some new projects that will blow us away. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Tim Cook doesn't usually reach out to news outlets, at least not like this. So the fact that he went the extra mile to say that the story was false points to the fact that it was either he was either personally hurt by the fact that Johnny Ive was leaving or Wall Street Journal's report was actually accurate and he was trying to save Apple's stock from declining even further because yes, shortly after the news of Johnny Ive leaving broke, Apple actually lost $9 billion. Yes, $9 billion. That's... Um, 
quite a bit. Okay, so what's going to happen to Apple next? Well, Tim Cook has just named Jeff Williams to lead the Apple design team, which is a, a bit of a weird choice. You see, Jeff Williams is currently the COO of Apple or the chief operating officer. So he handles a lot of the daily operations, resource management, uh, planning and all that. So it is very odd that Jeff now leads the design team because you know his previous role was completely unrelated. But according to Apple, Jeff was heavily involved in the product development process of Apple products. Jeff was actually on the product development team responsible for the iPhone 4, the Apple Watch, and many others. Also, Jeff Williams joined Apple in 1998, just a year after Tim did. So it seems like Tim Cook wanted to give this position to someone that he trusted and knew for many, many years, rather than to someone that he didn't know at all from the design team, even if that person might have been a better, a better pick for the role. Personally, I think that Phil Schiller would have been the perfect choice for this role because uh, Phil has actually been involved in, in pretty much every major Apple product since 1997. So I don't know why Apple didn't choose Phil. Um, yeah, also Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg have both reported that the design team is now working on the upcoming Apple AR glasses, which are set to be launching in 2020, and we've actually done a full video on the Apple glasses here with everything you need to know. So definitely give it a watch if you're interested in hearing more about that. So in the end, Johnny Ive was not just responsible for Apple's iconic product design that have influenced almost all the other tech brands today. By the way, uh, Huawei CEO even admitted that he admires Apple and buys his family iPhones uh, when they're not in China. Uh, but Johnny Ive even holds over 5,000 patents at Apple. Will Apple fail without Johnny Ive? Um, no. Will it improve? We don't know. But what we do know is that Johnny Ive will now do what he loves. He'll get to design more products, more toilets, just joking, probably not toilets, but he did have some really good designs. Uh, but he will be able to design not just Apple products, uh, he will be involved in Apple through his company Love From, but he will be able to design pretty much anything that he wants. And the design team with Jeff leading it will get someone that will be more involved than Johnny Ive was in the last few years because he wasn't that happy. So I think overall it's a win-win situation for everyone. But yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about all this, the whole Johnny Ive situation? What do you think of Apple's recent designs? Do you think they... Uh, they kind of lacked anything unique about them and anything interesting and you know the fact that Apple was reusing old designs what do you guys think about that and yeah let me know in the comments hope you guys enjoyed this video it was a really fun one to make and uh yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it all the research that went into it and yeah thank you for watching uh this is subscribe notifications if you want to see more in-depth tech videos and interesting tech videos like this one I'm Daniel and uh yeah I'll see you guys in the next one so tech signing out cheers